violence hits the streets of Brazil as protests against the impeachment of suspended President Dima Rousseff see police use tear gas to calm the crowds. Also this hour, the US calls on its allies, Turkey and the Syrian Kurds, to stop fighting each other as Ankara ramps up its military presence on the border with Syria. And the Battle of the Bikini. The controversy surrounding the Muslim swimsuit on French beaches intensifies with the former president saying he'll ban them if re-elected. Hello there, it's just gone midday here in Moscow. You're watching RT International. Now, hundreds of people gathered outside Congress in Brazil's capital, Brasilia, to voice their support for suspended President Dina Rousseff, whose impeachment trial is currently underway. Elsewhere in the country, chaos broke out in Sao Paulo when protesters began lighting fires in the streets. Well, on Monday, Rousseff appeared before the Senate to defend herself on charges of financial corruption. Uh, she also reiterated that her government, unlike that of the interim president, had been legitimately elected by millions of Brazilian voters. Before speaking at the Senate, the ousted president was warmly welcomed by her supporters. <laughs> Just a few hours after Dilma Rousseff testified in front of the Senate, her supporters have hit the streets of some of Brazil's major cities. And many of them felt inspired by the passionate words of Dilma Rousseff. President Dilma is a fighter. She stands up for fair causes like the ones we achieved under her and under Lula. That inspires me to come and fight for democracy. It was indeed a very powerful message by Dilma Rousseff. She said that no one should expect from her the silence of a coward. She wanted to make very clear to every senator that she wanted to look at them in the eye and tell them that she was completely innocent, that she had nothing to do with manipulating the budget. Uh, she also had very hard words for her political opponents, especially for Michel Temer and his interim government accusing them of wanting to implement radical budget cuts and, and cutting social programs. Many here feel that a permanent Michel Temer government would mean a step back in social matters. We're about to lose everything we accomplished since 2002 under Lula and Dilma. This is Avenida Paulista right in the middle of the city. As you can see, this is the aftermath of hours of protest. The first few hours were completely peaceful, but at the end, some individuals started to get some trash cans, put them in the middle of the avenue, set them fire, and that's when the police came in, started with tear gas. Their air is practically unbreathable, and the whole main artery of the city is closed down after what we, we have to say was mainly a, a, a peaceful protest but turned violent in just a few minutes. Well, uh, Michael Fox from the news agency Telly Sir English told us that more protests are likely if Rousseff is impeached. There's hundreds outside of Brasilia right now. The Landless People's Movement, which is one of the major agricultural uh, movements, and it's the largest social movement in the Americas, uh, the cooch, the major unions, everyone, all these leftist forces have already said they're going to hit the streets. In fact, there was one tweet that was sent out today that said, if there's a coup, there will be struggle. We already know that in Brazil, the left and the social movements have been more organized than at any point since the last 50, 50 years, since the 1964 coup. So they're already kind of organizing around this, uh, obviously, if, if the vote goes against Dilma.
Now, another news, Turkey is continuing to boost its military presence at its border with Syria as part of what Ankara does call an anti-terrorist operation. These are the latest pictures from the Turkish-Syrian border. Aside from the explosions there, though, the video does show other military and emergency vehicles crossing the border. Just last week, Ankara launched a large-scale military operation in the Syrian town of Jarablus. It's targeting ISIL, but also Kurdish forces in Syria, as Turkey regards them as terrorists too. And this is how the sides are currently dispersed. The Euphrates River has become a line of separation between Turkish and Kurdish forces. Uh, Turkey has been shelling their positions, pushing them uh, to the east. Well, clashes between Turkey and the Kurds are a bit of a headache for the US, which is allied to them both. The Pentagon has already called on both sides to de-escalate the situation, calling it unacceptable. Over the last few, uh, last few weeks, we have asked the US State Department how it would deal with such a situation. Now, are there disagreements uh, uh, among uh, members of the coalition as to uh, how we proceed and, and, and with whom we're cooperating on the ground? Uh, I'm not going to say that there, there aren't. We don't, as you know, recognize uh, the, the PYD as a terrorist organization. We recognize that the Turks do, and I understand that. Uh, even the best of friends aren't, aren't, agree, aren't going to agree on everything. We're going to continue to work with the YPG as a part of the overarching uh, Syrian Democratic Forces. We disagree on the YPG. Uh, we've, we believe that they're focused on uh, fighting Daesh within Syria. The, the only choice to be made uh, is to continue the fight against Daesh. Well, as the conflict has now escalated into heavy clashes, Artis Gyanichikian went to the State Department once more to get Washington's reaction. Washington says it supports both Turkey and Kurdish forces in their fight against ISIL, but they're now fighting each other. How does this affect the fight against ISIL? I asked the State Department. The situation where your one ally is fighting the other when they're both supposed to be fighting ISIL and other terrorists, do you think this helps terrorists? Do I think it helps terrorists? As I said to Arshad, I mean, if the terrorists we're talking about is Daesh, and that's principally the, the terrorist group that, uh, that military efforts by the coalition are aimed at, um, uh, these clashes that we've seen over the last two days are not uh, helping us um, degrade and destroy Daesh as an entity uh, any faster. The Pentagon had earlier said the U.S. is actively trying to facilitate deconfliction and unity of focus on ISIL. It is not clear exactly how the U.S. is doing that, considering the fact that the Turkish president has openly stated that he's going into Syria to fight not only ISIL, but also Kurdish forces there. It's not like Turkish forces accidentally bumped into Kurdish fighters in Syria. In fact, when Turkey announced the beginning of the operation last week, the U.S. supported it, and Vice President Joe Biden and told the Syrian Kurds to get out of the way. A confrontation seemed inevitable, and we saw it unfold this weekend. And it may spill over into a war within a war in Syria. I asked about it at the State Department. Do you get a sense that a separate war is starting within the war in Syria, and that by, by supporting Turkey's operations in Syria, the U.S. may be perhaps unintentionally is supporting the beginning of that separate war within we're, we're, war. We're, okay so there's a lot there what we're supporting uh, in terms of turkey in, intervention in syria is efforts to go after daesh and to help preserve that that section of the border uh it, 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 not preserve it but to secure it that section of the border uh, up near manbij that 98 kilometers um against the flow of foreign fighters and, uh, and, and terrorist activity, which has long been a problem. We've talked about this many, many times here in this room, and we certainly talked about it with our Turkish counterparts, about the importance of securing that stretch uh, of border, and their intervention in Syria was designed at the outset for that purpose. There are many conflicts inside uh, the broader war inside uh, in, in Syria, and we're as focused as much as we can uh, on working our way through that. In the conflict between Turkey and Turkish-backed rebels on the one hand and Syrian Kurds on the other, Washington finds itself supporting both sides. And neither side is happy with it. And the U.S. may be losing influence with both.
Well, after terrorists cut off the water supply to Aleppo in Syria, residents have been seeking ways, alternative ways, to get vital resources. Our correspondent Lizzie Phelan speaks to those who've risked their lives crossing front lines to make sure Aleppo has access to water. We'll have a report later on in the programme.